Hey guys, Austin Wiedrich here with another edition of Nerdy in Many Ways, and today I'm going to be doing college football week two. And so, last week I talked about some games that I felt like were important, and I'm going to do the same thing this week with some games that were just really impressive games, games that had a lot of importance, and some games, including ones particularly, that was kind of a letdown for some particular fans out there. And now we'll be mentioning some Division Three college football at the end of the video with some highlights and some analysis, but that'll be to the end, so stick to the end for that. But for now, we're going to talk about these three games that I felt like were really important for this past weekend. Now, the first one was a highly anticipated matchup between the Clemson Tigers and Texas A&M Aggies. Now, Texas A&M and Clemson had probably the game of the season last year with a two-point victory going for the Tigers. Now, so coming into this game, people thought, well, Texas A&M played them pretty well last year. And many people felt like Texas A&M, compared to last season, is highly improved, which could be the case. But we really did not see that in this game. We saw a game that was dominated by Clemson basically the entire way. The score was 24 to 10, which is kind of deceiving because most of the way Clemson just dominated. I mean, Texas A&M got their only touchdown with seconds left in the fourth quarter. It was kind of a garbage touchdown. And so really, if you look at it, Clemson basically won 24 to three and really showed that they're not messing around. They're not willing to just get upset by just some other team that's kind of building up. They're they're ready to defend their throne, and they're not going to go down easy. And with that being possibly their toughest game of the year, besides Syracuse, who always plays Clemson tough, I mean, who's to say that Clemson's not a lock in the college football playoff? I mean, many people are saying that, and I kind of agree. I don't really see any team in their schedule that coming up that could really dethrone them that could really prevent them from getting back into it. The second game I want to be talking about is one that, of course, some particular fans out there were really stressed out about and are kind of worried now coming into this next week and through the rest of the season. This, of course, being the Michigan versus Army game. Now, Michigan did win this game 24-21 to in double overtime to avoid the upset. This has to worry you if you're a fan of the big house in Michigan because Michigan, for the past couple of years, with Coach Jim Harbaugh, have been predicted to possibly making the college football playoff each year. They re have recruited well, they have some great talent, and so everybody's saying, oh, Michigan could be in the college football playoff. But personally for me, and no disrespect to Michigan, I, I actually do want Michigan to make the playoff at some point. I feel like they're a classic program, but I don't see it right now. I do not see Michigan making the playoff this year or the next year. And I feel like Jim Harbaugh is a little to blame. I think Jim Harbaugh is not quite as good of a coach as people think he is. He's still a great coach, far better than I could ever be, so I can't really judge. But I think people give him more hype than he deserves. And so that kind of sets you up for disappointment if you're a fan of a team that he coaches. Now, he did have a Super Bowl appearance with the 49ers against his younger brother, John Harbaugh. But, again, I just don't really see this Michigan team going to the playoff anytime soon. And, again, it was against Army. And no disrespect to Army... They've had a great history in their program, of course, being more a long time ago is when they had their heyday. But this is a game that Michigan should have come in and they should have simply wiped the floor with them. They shouldn't. This shouldn't have been a contest, really. If they are the team that they expect to be, this should not have been a contest. Now, it might be a scare that helps them to propel them throughout the rest of the season. That remains to be seen. But for right now, Michigan fans, I think, have a little bit of room to worry. The last game I want to talk about is probably the most anticipated game of the weekend, was LSU and Texas. Now, ever since Colt McCoy, the second winningest quarterback in college football history, graduated from Texas and moved on to the NFL, Texas has been rebuilding. Texas has had some struggles, and I mean, you've seen the, the record the past couple of years. It's been tough. And so when Sam Ellinger last year after the bowl game said, hey, Texas, we're back, people got a little hopeful. And Texas had a great season last year, great, I guess, rebuilding year for their senses concerned. But coming into this game, we're all thinking, well, this could determine whether Texas is back or not. And it really was that test. If Texas were to have played the LSU teams of the past, where they just simply grinded out hard-nosed football, low-scoring games, Texas would have won this game. But unfortunately for Texas, LSU has kind of gotten smart. They've decided to expand their offense, expand their playbook, and let the quarterback Joe Burrows really get into his element, really and have let him throw the ball out and there, air it out, and get it to multiple different weapons on the field because LSU recruits amazingly well with talent. I mean, you can just 
I can count on both my hands just talents that they had in the NFL, gained to the NFL in the past two years, just easy. The top tier athletes that got into the NFL. Just fantastic recruiting program, great athletes. And so for me, it's about dang time that they started using that in a passing attack. And honestly, that was the big difference between LSU and Texas. LSU was able to win that game 45 to 38, really showing their scoring capability. Now with this game, you might think it's just a downer for Texas, which it's not entirely. It shows you're up there. You're getting there. You're getting to that point. You're almost at the breaking point of getting over to being in the college football playoff discussion. But on the flip side, if you're an LSU fan, you have to be really excited because now your team has scoring capability. Your team can score the ball quick. Your team has a passing attack you can rely on. And it's not just one you kind of throw out there when you're in a time of desperation. But now you have a chance with Alabama, in my opinion. Because in years past, LSU's only chance has been to keep it a low-scoring game. And that puts a lot of pressure on the defense. But now they have a chance to really be in a scoring battle with Alabama and possibly win, honestly. Because, again, LSU always has great defense, but now that their offense has really stepped it up, who knows where they could go? Honestly, I could probably see LSU getting in the playoff over Alabama. But again, we'll have to wait a little bit. This is just the week two of the season. But... I'm not going to make any predictions of that, but I could see that happening. And so that's week two of Division I of college football. But real quick before I go, I want to show you guys some highlights and some analysis on a game I actually had the chance of commentating in Division Three football on Saturday. And this game was between Southern Virginia University and Montclair State University. Now these two teams were in the same conference last year, and it was a, a great battle between these two teams. Some great talents and a great rebuilding year for Southern Virginia University, who in the past few years has really been building up, of course, with head coach Ed Mulitalo, who you might remember as an offensive lineman for the Ravens, as well as the Detroit Lions. Now, this game produced two of the craziest highlights I think I've seen in a long time. And the first one it was early in the game. SVU had blocked a punt of Montclair State and gotten it, the ball in really good territory. And they did this. On the offensive side of the field, which will help lighten his burden. And we got Cade Nelson, 36 in the backfield. He's a stout, stout player. Here we go. Oh, oh. and it's uh, still caught. Look at that. Fumbled into the end zone. Oh my gosh. And that might and end up being the craziest touchdown, touchdown of the I think I've ever seen. Oh my gosh. The first touchdown of the season comes in the most unorthodox way you could possibly imagine. Off the helmet of a Red Hawk defender. And we have umpires talking, referees talking, Dawson. Let's see. Let's hope it stands. Go ahead and explain. So, yeah, sometimes it's just better to be lucky than good. <laughs> I mean, it. It was such a bizarre thing. I mean, you never see a ball bouncing off a defender's helmet into the hands of a receiver, then him running towards the end zone, fumbling the ball into the end zone, and then a member of your same team getting on top of it for a touchdown. You just don't see that every day. But then the second highlight is another thing that I've, I, I'm for sure I've never seen before in my life, and I don't think very many people at all have seen this. And here it is. He's definitely going to go for it. All right, boys. Special teams, help us out one more time. And that's fun, and then he's got some space. Go, baby, go, baby. He's going to take it to the house. Oh, he did oh, not. No, he did goodness. not. No, he did not. Number nine, oh, Josh oh, Newman. Oh, take hey. it to the house. No, you he did not. You've got to be kidding me. No, he did. I have never seen that in I my have life. not either. But it clearly is something they talked about. My They talked goodness. about it. They got a clear, clear hop, a clean hop go. 30. And that was a touchdown that really put the game away for Southern Virginia University. And as you heard in my audio clip, I have never seen that before in my life. I've never seen an onside kick return for a touchdown to basically seal a game. I've never seen that. And, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that one makes the Sports Center top 10. I mean, honestly, I would not be surprised. That's my coverage of college football week two in the books. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm going to do another coverage of college football week three once those games are complete. And so stay tuned for those and along with other different content that I'll be having throughout the remainder of this week as well as the next coming weeks. And so until then, I'll see you guys soon.